depend on CNN. We've been hurt terribly as a nation. We do have to improve our security, and we will do that. If we give up our liberties in improving our security, the terrorists win. Welcome back to Crossfire. One day after the House, the Senate today passed anti-terrorism legislation, giving the Department of Justice broad new authority to track down suspected terrorists, new police powers that some fear could be used against innocent citizens. Does the war on terrorism justify limits on civil liberties? Maurice Sonnenberg, former vice chair of the National Commission on Terrorism, votes in the affirmative. Hussein Ibish, communications director of the American Arab Anti-Discrimination Committee, votes in the negative. Tucker. Mr. Ibish, you said at least once that some of these suspects have been rounded up and detained because they're Arabs, or yeah. partly because they're Arabs, and I, I grant you that that's at least partly true and that mm -hmm. it is rough on American sensibilities to think that this is happening. But let's step back sure. just for one moment. The attacks of September 11th were committed by people who don't come from across the spectrum. Right. Uh, they come from a very specific point of view and in some cases a very specific community. I want to read right. you a quote from Michael Kinsley, once occupied the Bill Press mm -hmm. chair here on Crossfire, not a flame and right winger, no. something of a civil libertarian. Here's his quote Indeed. from Slate Magazine. We're at war with a terror network that just killed 6,000 innocents and has anonymous agents in our country planning more slaughter. Are we really supposed to ignore the one identifiable fact we know about them? Question mark. The one identifiable fact is that they're, of course, all radical Muslims. What we have to acknowledge that, don't yes, we? If we want to find out sure. who their accomplices are. Oh, of, of course, uh, that's an, uh, everything you just read from Michael Kinsley is obviously true. Uh, what that doesn't translate into is that it's a good idea to racially profile people. That uh, it doesn't mean, therefore, that ethnicity isn't still a false lead. If that's the principle or the only thing that calls somebody to your attention, I think you should listen to the words of Vinnie Canestrano, the former head of the CIA counterterrorism efforts, who acknowledges and says and is, is actually the representative of a whole wing of counterterrorism and law enforcement community that recognizes that uh, racial profiling, ethnic stereotyping does not translate into good police work. So while you have Wait to recognize the fact, hold on, you have to recognize this fact, you have to take it into consideration, but you don't charge out uh, rounding up everybody who looks uh, like they may well, or may not for, be an, a, an Arab and a Muslim. By the way, first you'll all, never that has round not me happened up. In the United States. I, agree, I, don't, right. I don't know what you're right. talking about, well, but the idea, I'm you know, telling you, the, what the, the logical that conclusion is. You know, you can't take that yeah. into consideration that every time a law enforcement agency that. does, it's racial profiling. No, I didn't say targeting. that. I didn't say that. I said that so when that's that the principle, when it, de it depends on how it's done. When it's part of the mix, it's fine. When it's the main thing that leads somebody to be uh, to be counted as suspicious, it's wrong. And by the way, it's also probably illegal as well. And I, I think that that's the simple standard. Uh, taking it into consideration is fine. Making it the principal marker of suspicion is wrong. Mr. Sonnenberg, I was glad to hear you say at the top of the show that you uh, are not condoning torture or drugs to make people talk. But I want to read you something that you wrote this morning, sir, in the New York Daily News, just a quick sentence. You yep. do say, to win the war against terrorism, it might unfortunately be necessary for this country to revise traditional concepts of justice, civil liberties, and our rule of law. Now, if not torture, if not drugs, how far are you willing to go? No. First of all, I am referring distinctly and only, if you go through the whole article, to the legislation. I okay. am not referring to what you're talking about. Okay. And as Mr. Ibish is taking the point of view that this type of legislation might, you take my sentence, he would, uh, he would feel that what I've said uh, is wrong in terms of this legislation. That's all I was talking about. All right, well, in terms of this legislation, and, uh, the leg and I was addressing it there, too, the legislation calls for new Not powers torture. for... Not for No, but new powers <laughs> for roving wiretaps, mm -hmm. new powers yep. for inter getting into the Internet email, new pa powers for getting into bank records yeah. of people. And isn't it judicial review. Right. And isn't it true that all of those are powers that can be used against innocents and will be against innocent citizens of the United States? Uh, it could is a better word than will be. Now... The purpose of that legislation and the reason it is there is for the obvious thing. Today we're in a world of internet communication. These terrorists live by the computers. So the idea of having the ability to be able to find the user, the provider, 
where the messages are going, to be able to go, go across state lines. Remember, these fellows were in libraries using computers around the country. We've had prior terrorist situations where they've had their laptops and they've had other, this is not a, something new. Now, roving wiretaps, what can you do? You've got the cell phones, you've got across border situations. I don't think you can take a benign view that this is a digital uh, as opposed to analog situation. Yeah. Well, let me just say, you know, that everything that we're talking about comes in a context. It's extremely important to understand that th we have a history in this country, uh, and we know uh, what the federal government has done with uh, these kind of powers in the past. Throughout the 20th century, there were repeated instances of the federal government using uh, extreme arbitrary powers that they may or may not have had legally. Uh, in the 20s, in the Red Scares, in the McCarthy era, in the COINTELPRO period uh, during the 1960s and 70s, uh, up to an including the secret evidence cases you were referring to before, we've seen that when you give the federal government and individual bureaucrats the power over the individual of this kind, that without checks and balances, without judicial review, without other kinds of inputs, that this can and, okay, and almost well, always does well, can lead I, to wait, abuse. Wait, Mr. Bush, let me can ask you a question. Can I answer yeah, that? Sure. sure, go ahead, sir. Okay, go ahead. Quick, Who? please. Okay. Uh, you, Mr. Uh, look, Sonnenberg. Look, I, I understand exactly what you're saying, but we've had periods where we are at war. In the Civil War, we suspended habeas corpus. In World War I, unfortunately, Germans were treated very, German Americans were treated terribly. In the yeah. World War II, we have the situation of the Japanese. Well, Interestingly surely we enough, don't want to repeat wait, this. No, wait a minute. I mean, we, we don't want to repeat that, right? Let me finish. I'll, you, know, you have a situation in World War II where unfortunately, Japanese Americans were taken and put in, in camps, who, by the way, it was proposed, and the biggest advocate was, funny enough, Earl Warren, and you'll all be amused to know that the person who opposed it was J. Edgar Hoover, but that's for another story. Now, what I'm saying is, what we're doing here, go to England right now. England has passed a anti-terrorist bill, which is much more draconian than ours is today. In point of fact, the things you're talking about, the mother of all, let's say, democracies has a very stringent yeah, law. Okay, the European well, me, Court wait, of wait, Human on, Rights has it. ruled that yeah. that law, the Prevention of Terrorism Act, brings Britain out of sync with the EU and violates human rights. We don't need now, that. Now, Mr. Bush, really quick, wrong, let me wrong. just ask you a question here. Hold on, hold on, Mr. Sonnenberg. Uh, hold on. Yeah. Okay, here's my yeah, question. Go, go right. Truth serum. Yeah. Now, yeah. federal agents want to use sodium pentothal yeah. on uh, detainees. Hold on. The idea, the idea is this would wreck the court cases, but it would possibly provide information that would prevent deaths. Yeah. Well, the what reason, is wrong with this? The, the so reason what, what? we don't rely on threats, coercions, truth serums and the like is, is not <clears> just <throat> our concern for the rights of individuals. It's also that the information you get from those things, including from truth serums and drugs, is not reliable. When you uh, so besought somebody that they just start talking, you don't get reliable information. You terrify someone and threaten them, you don't get reliable information. Well, well, that's that's, that's well, the fact. Okay. So, okay. You know, right. we're gonna Gentlemen, no drugs, no torture no here. Drugs, no drugs, no torture though for another show he might come out <laughs> in favor or perhaps in our closing comments. You'll have to stick around to find out Bill Preston be right back.